Rayman has always been a more abstract and nearly forgettable character to me. I've never really been interested in his games up until recently, and I've also never been super immersed in the worlds his games were trying to create. However, by his sheer design alone, I'd still consider Rayman a gaming icon. But I suppose you're bound to stand out when you're the only person who has funny floating arms and legs. Nevertheless, my interest in Rayman was recently reignited when I saw him in a unique role on a Netflix show of all things. Hi! Welcome to the Rayman Show! This is Captain Laserhawk, a Blood Dragon remix. I'll be honest, I don't know what a Laserhawk or Blood Dragon is. All I know is Rayman is in this show. And he's a terrorist. Upon seeing clips of this show on the interwebs, I was immediately reminded of both Rayman as a character and his history with television shows, which is why today I wanted to take a look back at the original Rayman show. All my fellas! Rayman the Animated Series was originally going to be a 26 part television show that was meant to be released alongside Rayman 2, The Great Escape. The show was also funded by the government of Canada, meaning Rayman was apparently so popular at one point that he had relations with entire countries. This is Obama, I've done it. I've stopped racism. However, due to multiple production issues, the show was cancelled halfway through its first season, leaving literally just four episodes and an apparent unfinished fifth episode being released. Release. The series was published in a surprising amount of spaces however, with dubs being available for those in France, Germany, as well as the Netherlands and other countries in Europe. It's very rare, but there's also an English dub of the series made for North America, which is what we'll be looking at today. But don't worry about its rarity. The English dub is good. <laughs> You'll see why later. Now then, make sure to go grab your favourite beverage of choice and try not to uh, shoot your hand, I guess, because here we go. Episode 1, Black Mac Napping, Pfft, okay, opens on a dreary view of a large city at night. Then, we smash cut to a flying circus. Yes. Inside, we find the owner of said circus, the great Rigatoni. <laughs> <coughs> I love how Italian people in media are just named after pastas, by the way. Very cool. Hey, where's the freaking Gabagoo? Giving a pep talk to his group of performers who he keeps captive for shows. These performers being known as Bettina, Flips, Cookie, and Lacmac? What the fuck you doing here, nigga? Identify yourself. Who the fuck are you? Listen. I have a small game theory about these characters. You see, while none of them appear in Rayman 2, I have a suspicion that they are counterparts or at least inspired by the characters in that game. For instance, Lakmak is blue and is perceived as strong but dim-witted. These attributes could also be shared with Glowbox, Rayman's friend in the second game. Furthermore, Bettina is a woman, <laughs> shocking, and her stature could be compared to Lie the Fairy. Flips, I was going to compare to Murphy, however Murphy is an educated and guiding figure throughout Rayman 2, telling you how the game works as as well as the controls for the player. Flips is not like that in the slightest, not even being able to speak English. So I guess she could be compared to the Lums, which are collectible items within Rayman 2 that are small and have wings, like Flips. Cookie's erratic and sometimes neurotic nature could be compared to the bizarre behaviour of the Tinsies. They both also have long noses. If that's not concrete evidence, then I don't know what is. Anyway, once we've become familiar with that lot, we see Captain Razorbeard, a lackey of Rigatoni, trying to get Rayman into the circus as a performer. Side note, the scenes where Razorbeard and Rayman argue and bicker are especially funny to me, considering Razorbeard is the menacing main villain of Rayman 2, being the leader of Robo Pirates in that game. Also, I haven't really been talking about the voice cast much, but if you recognise Rayman's voice, that's because he's voiced by Billy West, also known as Philip J. Fry from Futurama. Pleased to meet you. Car. What? 
He does more or less the same voice here, except adding a New Yorker slash Brooklyn accent, I guess. I'm English, so I'm not too well versed on that sort of thing. Thanks anyway, I had a big lunch. But yeah, long story short, Rayman tries to fiddle Razor Beard and he's having none of that, so he flings him into a cage with the other circus performers. This is where he hatches a plan to escape the ship with the performers, as he realizes Lacmac can bend the metal bars of the cages with his super strength. Good trick, but it's clear to see the bar is fake. Fake? Oh no, my friend. This is cast iron steel. <laughs> Lock Max Strong. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rigatoni is playing Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted, but can't see shit thanks to flips being used as a distraction. He gets Razorbeard to see what the commotion is, but by the time he arrives, they're all free from the cages. Oh, what have you done with Lackmack? Oh, uh, it was the craziest thing, right? He was Lackmack. What the fuck's that supposed to mean? Rayman draws a big circle out of the ship, and they all drop down to Tomato Town. Upon realizing that his biggest money printers have escaped his clutches, Rigatoni now enlists the work of the best character in the show, Detective Grub, to catch the performers. Meanwhile... Rayman and gang are now on the run and encounter a man fixing his... car. No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, 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 wait! My, uh, friend here can fix your cat. No, no, no. Literally every person who covers this show makes that joke. I'm not beating a dead horse here. At least, not entirely. Anyway, they make Grand Theft Auto and drive off. Ending the first episode. In conclusion... Like... It introduces the characters nicely, as well as the main conflict that will be present throughout all the episodes. My only real pet peeve is that none of this has anything to do with Rayman 2, but I honestly don't mind that too much. They definitely have some cool ideas here, if not very bizarre ones, even for Rayman standards. I also believe this different approach is good for the character, as Rayman has always been one to incite creativity in its developers. This can even be seen in most recent games like Rayman Origins, where Michelle Ancel, Rayman's creator, will enlist the work of artists and illustrators to breathe life into Rayman's world. I just want to say if my voice sounds different, it's because I have a bit of a cold at the moment. Yeah, no worries about that. Episode 2, No Parking, was the pilot episode for the show and first aired at the Annecy International Animated Film Festival in 1999. This episode, in my opinion, has a lot more meat on its bones in terms of plot and complexity. The episode begins where the first one left off, with the gang driving about in their newly stolen car. This is also where we get a lot of shots which just detail the city and its residents, which, to me, just emphasises how bizarre not only the city is, but the show as well. Soon, the gang are noticed by my beloved Detective Grub, and they begin a chase. Can I just say I love how his police car lights are just some bug making a wee woo noise? It's, it's very funny. <laughs> After the chase, Detective Grub crashes into a box of toys. These toys are particularly interesting, as they use the face of the main character of Tonic Trouble, which was a game Ubisoft made in order to test out 3D platforming before working on Rayman 2. It's quite an arbitrary place to make reference to it, but at least it shows that to some degree, the creators of the show did in fact care about the Rayman IP. Meanwhile, the gang stops behind a building because Cookie feels sick and Lackmack is hungry. That definitely should be your top priority right now, guys. Good job. They all take a break at a nearby park where Phillips finds a smelly old teddy bear in a rubbish bin while the gang argue. I'm gonna do what I should have done a long time ago. Write my last will and testament. Come on, Lackmack! When Flips comes back, she realises no one cares about her shitty, disease-ridden teddy bear and cries herself to sleep in the car. Again, priorities. Seconds later, the car is towed away and the gang have to get it back. Problem is, they don't know where it is and result in asking Detective Grub nearby. But they can't just go up to the Grub. They're wanted criminals for crimes against the... 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 <laughs> I don't know! <laughs> but they need to disguise themselves. Enter this show's version of Ramon. <clears throat> Excuse me, officer. I'm uh, new to your fair city, uh, and I seem to have, uh, how you say, lost. Well, actually, I think my car may have been um, carried away. Uh, might you be so kind as to tell me where I can retrieve it? What they've done with Rayman is absolutely fucking disgraceful. They've made him into an alcoholic crackhead who... I've seen the scene of him eating sushi off a furry's bum. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, they manage to get directions to a scrapyard, but Rayman accidentally reveals himself, and another chase plays out. Police! Police! 
Man, I need a fan cam of this man, he's brilliant. Anyhow, the gang managed to get to the scrapyard where they find a conveyor belt of cars all being eaten by a giant cow. Fair. And Flips is on that conveyor belt. We also see Detective Grubb arrive at the scene. The gang uses both the fact that Grubb is distracted, as well as an oncoming set of cars, in order to get inside. Rayman's a bit cheeky though, and drags Grubb's car along with him into the scrapyard. Call me right away, will you? Hey, where's my car? Hearing car pronounced correctly in the series just sounds out of place. Rayman and gang eventually catch up to Flips and try to get to her. However, whilst climbing the scrapyard, we get this spine-tingling, dramatic scene with Bettina. I'm fine! See, Flips, hurry! Help. Luckily, she's saved by Cookie, however, and Rayman is able to focus on Flips. Go get her! I mean, this is totally random, and there was no hint towards Rayman being able to do this beforehand in the episode, but, um... Come on, man, it's from the games. But yeah, no flying fists are gonna save Flips, and she falls into the giant cow. But wait, Rayman's fist single-handedly saves Flips from the cow's grasp. That hand must be some level of strength, especially when you consider that the cow's digestive system must also be incredibly strong from munching on metal cars all day. But then, just when it looks like things are okay, Detective Grubb manages to catch up to them. All hope is lost. But that's when the writers thought, oh shit, we forgot about Lakmak in this episode. Lakmak rescue! Yeah, no, he just comes out of nowhere and saves everyone. No foreshadowing or anything like that, leaving Detective Grubb all alone. There goes my car. There goes my reward. <laughs> there goes my job. I drive. But yeah, the characters are saved and they ride off into the sunset. Or not, because they actually fall off a cliff. Or, or not, because Rayman just remembered he can fly. Oh, just a little trick I picked up. Where, from where, Rayman? This is the first time you've done this in this entire show. So they fly off into the sunset. Or, or, or not, because they just end up falling to their deaths. Or, 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 or not, because they actually fall into an abandoned apartment. How lucky is that? The gang now have their own little place to call home. But then, it's revealed to us that just below that apartment, there lives Detective Grubb, ending the episode on a sort of cliffhanger. In conclusions, in conclusions, I'm gonna fucking in conclusion. While this episode has a bad case of plot contrivances and Deus Ex Machinas and words to describe shitty writing, maybe you should try getting a job. I still had good fun with this episode. I particularly like how there are more stakes here other than just Detective Grubb, and the jokes here are some of the best in the show. It's also good to see that the writers did their homework with the Rayman franchise, as elements of the games did appear here, such as Rayman's fists and his hair gliding ability. However, I won't lie that some of these inclusions did sort of feel slammed in without any consideration for the show's actual story. All round though, not a bad episode, and I can see why this show was picked up in the first place. This is where I feel, anyway, that the show has a change of tone from something more adventurous to now something more akin to a slice of life show. This can be seen in this episode, where instead of escaping a circus or saving a friend from death, we now have Cookie having a headache. A stark contrast in stakes, but with the exception of Detective Grubb still being present and in pursuit of the characters. This is also my favourite episode for its attempts at horror. <laughs> We'll get to that later. Episode 3, High Anxiety, starts off in Detective Grubb's apartment, where he's practicing for Bullseye. <laughs> If you get that reference, then you're much, much older than me. Too bad he sucks balls at it though. We then fly up to meet the gang in the abandoned apartment, where Cookie is having a headache. Maybe it's that brain tumor acting up again. You little shit, it's not a tumor, okay? I I'm gonna strangle your parents! By the way, you may have noticed that Bettina's voice has slightly changed. In the first two episodes, Bettina was voiced by Carolyn Lawrence, the voice of Sandy Cheeks. However, in this episode, Bettina is now voiced by Lacey Chabert, also known as Season 1 Meg Griffin. Maybe you should follow my lead. Maybe you should, you do. Along with Billy West, this show has some really big names for like, no reason. Anyhow, Rayman suggests Cookie go to the doctors, and you won't believe what happens next. We then see Cookie in the doctor's office, where we get some cool shots of the decorations. I gotta give some props to whoever made this clock model, by the way. It actually looks like something you might see in Rayman too. I mean, the whole atmosphere in this room is just amazing, being all bizarre and cartoonish. Once the doctor actually arrives, we get some scenes of Cookie being checked for his sight, his hearing, and all sorts, as well as DeviantArt. Oh, fuck oh. In short, Cookie is found to have nothing wrong with him, which is all the needed reason to throw him in an asylum. He should be... Put in a nut house! 
We then see Cookie get thrown into a room with this old woman, and they start playing Go Fish. By the way, this actually has meaning to the story. Same with Grub playing darts. Meanwhile, Rayman and Friends plot a plan to get him out of the asylum. However, the discussion is halted when Detective Grub arrives at the scene. There are now stakes in this episode. Huzzah! Rayman and Friends need to get to Cookie before Grub does, meaning they need to think fast if they want to find a way into the asylum. They do eventually find a way in though, and while they look for Cookie, we get some good scenes with the asylum inmates. I just saw your friend! Yeah, 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 yeah! He, he, he was here, and he said he never wanted to see you again! <laughs> I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. Meanwhile, we see Grub arrive at <gasps> Cookie's room, and it's revealed to us that the old woman is actually Grub's mother. Having this moment where Grub is breathing down Cookie's neck is incredibly tense, and works really well in making the audience see the severity of Cookie's predicament. Then, we get this scene with Lakmak, and while the inmate moments of before were slightly freaky, this moment is literally staged like it's in The Shining or something, even showing the character's reaction before the scare. The lack of music also adds to the disturbing sort of feel this scene has. You see, Cookie? You like cookies too? Help me with this coat and I'll show you where they keep the cookies. Uh... What happened to the happiness? Then, all of this atmosphere is immediately broken when you hear Mr. Krabs' cameo. <laughs> It's wild that they managed to just have that in there. <laughs> and before I talk about the next scene, I just wanted to mention how genius this transition is. It's a good bit of foreshadowing. But yeah, in this scene, we're back with Grub and Cookie, where Cookie manages to get caught by Grub. How about a different game? Uh, cards, checkers, backgammon. Oh, I know. How about darts? Darts? That's it! I know you! You're one of those criminals! I'm actually about to explode pounding out of elements this show uses. It's... <laughs> it's beautiful. This then leads to a chase scene with the whole gang. I found cookie for you. I find it funny that this inmate is played up to be some strange and menacing character, when in actuality, he did just want cookies. It's very wholesome. Anyway, Riemann and Clem managed to escape the asylum with Grub being mistaken for the cookie guy and being put in a straitjacket. The gang ride off into the sunset and the episode ends. I think it's safe to call this episode my favourite out of all of them. The story here is actually well made, with plot devices and really good setups of elements, like Grub playing darts, the cookies, as well as Grub being mistaken for someone else. The tension with Grub and Cookie is also really well done, and the scenes with the inmates had a great flavour of horror comedy. Comparing all this to episode 2, where there were a number of slapped together elements that came out of nowhere, is like night and day. I also wanted to give an honourable mention to the design and art of the asylum, as well as the guards and inmates. Everything feels especially exaggerated and moody, with a consistent colour palette, which were things which may have been present in the past episodes, but I feel especially shine here. All around an amazing episode, and who knows how episode 4 will play out. Episode 4 is really where I feel the slice of life tone sets in, as the plot here mainly centres around relatively lower stakes, as well as being centralised in the apartment complex. So the episode begins in the abandoned apartment Rayman and Gang are taking residence in, with them in discussion of whether Detective Grub is gone so they can venture out for food, which doesn't really make any sense. Surely you would want Grub to be inside so you aren't captured whilst in the local Tesco. Anyways, to check if he's gone or not, they drill a hole through the floor so they can see his apartment. Cookie adds onto this idea by making a sort of submarine type look out. You never know when you just need to cook up a little something special. What does that even mean? Anywho, they look through the hole to find that Grub is holding flowers and chocolates. Grub has a date. What a chad. While the gang talks about this revelation, my man gets ready for his date, perfume and all. Come on, man, you could do better than that. But yeah, as you can imagine, Grub starts to fumble. He throws her about with her own umbrella and all sorts. Rayman and... Uh, the posse? Notice this and hatch a plan to try and save his date, because if Grub is in a relationship, then they reckon that he won't bother them as much. Weird assumption, but alright. It's worse than I thought. He's wearing the appetizer. And it doesn't even go with his outfit. One day you will have to answer for your actions. And God may not be so merciful. By the way, if Bettina's voice sounds different, it's because it is. She's now voiced by Kath Susie, the voice of Phil and Lil from Rugrats and Lola Bunny. Hot shake heaven. Anyway, Rayman, Bettina and Flips all go down to try help Grub's date and not be noticed. Meanwhile, Grub tries to set the woman up with some food and drink, but the ball cap that came off... 
to the bottle, shot across the room and hit the woman in her face. She storms off into the bathroom to take a fat piss. <laughs> but then suddenly, the fire alarm goes off in the kitchen and Grub rushes to the scene. This gives ample time for Rayman and Bettina to clean up the dining room, moving in chairs and even putting up flowers. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Grub comes back into the dining room where he and the woman begin to talk. Sorry about my speeding. <laughs> We're going 65 in a 35 zone. With Grub distracted, Rayman and Bettina move back into the kitchen to cook up some better food. Enter Cookie, who they know for his previously shown amazing cooking skills. What? He's never cooked before in the show? Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm scared, so don't worry. Anyway, Cookie gets into MasterChef by cooking up a great big meal. Need a little taste test? But oh no, Lakmak is a dopey fuck and drops a load of plates, leading Grub to investigate the kitchen. However, he doesn't find any criminals, but instead the meal they had been making for him. He then brings the meal out into the dining room. Room, impressing his date. Rayman and friends begin looking through the hole again and congratulate themselves on saving the date, but they celebrated too soon as Grub does one last big fumble. <laughs> the date huffs off and Grub is left alone again. But Rayman has an idea. He disguises himself as a singing telegram hired by Grub and arrives at the date's home to apologize and offer another date at a cinema. Da -da 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 -da. Sorry for the date. Hope I'm not too late. The date went so wrong. The date loves this and proceeds to phone Grub and arrange the next date. Grub is saved. Ending the episode. <laughs> In conclusion, while this episode I reckon is one of the weakest of the bunch, it's certainly not bad by any means. You may have noticed that this is probably the shortest I've talked about in episode 4, and that's really because nothing much of note really happens. As I said, the stakes were moderate, and there were no setups or any interesting plot points like there were in the last episode. But then again, you don't necessarily need such complexities to craft an interesting story, and what they do have here is fine. I do think some elements are Elephant green screen effect. <laughs> I do think some elements are contrived, like Cookie's cooking skills, but who knows, this may have been a setup for another episode or something. My favourite part of this episode is definitely the music. The opening theme is varied upon multiple times throughout the episode, and it's used quite well for such a bombastic piece of music. Can I get you more to eat? But yeah, not too bad of an episode. It's a shame that this is the last one, however, as this show was cancelled from here on out. Or was it? I mean, it was cancelled, but an episode was in the works. According to the Lost Media Archive, episode 5 was to be titled My Fair Lakmac, with RayWiki, the Rayman Wikipedia fan site, claiming it was to carry on the story to which was set up in episode 4. Both sites linked to a website belonging to Canadian Lebanese animator Emil Goriab. I apologise if I pronounced that name wrong. His website acting as a digital portfolio, showcasing some of his work. Looking at his site, you can see he's worked on a wide range of projects in games and animation. He was a technical director and partial animator for the PS1 game, Donald Duck Going Quackers, or Quack Attack in Europe, as well as the technical director and character modeler for the PS2 game Batman Vengeance, liking his Harley Quinn model a bit too much. <laughs> He also shows off some of the work he did on Rayman the Animated Series, including screenshots of moments he had animated from episodes 1, 4, and 5, as one set of screenshots is labelled My Fair Lakmak, confirming the lost episode's title. These two screenshots, I believe, are the only visual evidence of episode 5's existence, as RayWiki, as well as the Lost Media Archive, showcase these images on their pages discussing the episode. Just as a side tangent slash note type thing, I found Emil's IMDb page, which claimed he had a hand in some very prominent movies, from recent memory, like Toy Story 4, <laughs> Soul, what am I doing with my life? And even Avengers Endgame. He's come a very long way from doing PS1 games and Rayman. Congrats, man. But while finding pictures and confirming the name of the lost episode was all well and good, I needed more. Raywicky had claimed that the episode's story was to be a follow-up to episode 4's, but what would specifically happen in the episode? Was it any good? Were there any more voice acting changes? Were any characters going to come back like Rigatoni or Captain Razorbeard? Curiosity was absolutely killing me. But then I found it. A couple months ago, when I was preparing to research episode 5, I came across an article on some Wikipedia fan site. It's since been taken down, but I managed to find it again via the Wayback Machine, as though it was hiding from me. It detailed a story. 
A story of someone who had, upon looking around some old VHS tapes in his basement, come across episode 5, and upon watching the episode, recounted the whole experience in the article as a hypothetical script. So, I got some friends together, and read what was without a doubt, the lost Rayman episode. So before we do anything, uh, before I show you guys this amazing script that is 100% real. <laughs> so which uh, characters do you want to be? I want to be Rayman. I love Rayman. Am I am I allowed to use the R slur? Are you gonna like? Are you gonna? <laughs> I think saying slur before is pretty um bad. <laughs> In his video. Bro, can you not watch you <laughs> show <laughs> <laughs> Abe's, Abe's detective grub. Um, I wanna be I wanna be the uh lack knife. You guys could choose two because there's six characters. You wanna be <laughs> be Bettina as well? Ah. <laughs> and the ones that I wanna be Oh, uh, yeah. I wanted to be Kiki, let's go. Okay, let's go, okay. All's well and ends well. Yeah. We're good, let's go. Okay. Let's uh should we begin? Oh begin. Yes. Okay, title Rayman the Animated Series. Last episode, My Fair Lackmag. The episode opens in the chaotic streets of Aeropolis, where Rayman and his zany crew, Bettina, Lips, Lackmag, and Cookie, are being chased by Detective Grub, who's slipping and tripping over everything in his path. <laughs> Come on, guys, let's give Detective Grub the runaround. <laughs> the runaround. <laughs> They dodge through the bustling crowds, narrowly avoiding collisions with street vendors, flying pigeons, and even a runaway parade. Parade? Fuck. Even a runaway parade float. Hey, Ray, man. I'll catch you if it's the last thing I do. I haven't had this much fun since we accidentally turned Teenies God and a giant trampoline. <laughs> I told you, Mr. T from the A team and Bettina are the same person, okay? <laughs> I pity the fool. As they weave through the chaos, they stumble upon a peculiar looking shop with a sign that reads Mystical Madness Emporium. Without hesitation, they burst inside, hoping to lose Detective Grub in the confusion. <laughs> that was so distorted. <laughs> I know, I only, I only had extra limbs. <laughs> only you would think of something like that, Black Black. As they explore the shop, they accidentally knock over shelves and break various items, creating even more chaos. Wait, why does Flip speak? I thought they only made noises. <laughs> I mean, they chose to make it speak, I don't know. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all compose ourselves now. It's just you. It's just you, man. <laughs> Two hours later. Uh oh. Maybe we should have stayed outside. Too late for regrets now. Let's make the most of it. In the midst of the chaos, Lakmak discovers a potion labeled Elegance Elixir and takes a big goal, transforming into a posh gentleman with a twirly mustache and monocle. Well, what do you think? Am I not the epitome of refinement? Epitome? <laughs> It's, isn't it not a pit of me? <laughs> He's gonna be slightly Whoa! okay, it's in his nature. Before anyone can respond, Detective Grub bursts into the shop, slipping on a banana peel and crashing into a display of enchanted broomsticks. <laughs> oh, okay, he's dead. Detective he's dead. Grub. Detective <laughs> Grub. Two thousand years later. Girl. What in tarnation? Looks like you could use a hand, detective. Amidst the chaos and laughter, Detective Grub reluctantly admits defeat. You may have won this time, Rayman, but mark my words, I'll get you yet. With Detective Grub gone, the gang erupts into laughter, celebrating their victory and the unexpected turn of events. Well, that was certainly a wild ride. You knew a little person could cause so much mayhem. As they continue to laugh the joke, the camera zooms out, leaving the mystical Madness Emporium filled with laughter and the promise of more zany adventures to come. End of episode. Closing credits. Okay, so I may have done a small, minuscule bit of trolling here. This isn't actually the fifth episode of Rayman the Animated Series. In fact, the whole thing was written by ChatGPT. AI is truly amazing. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed. Anyway, let's get back to the actual series. So, what was the point of me talking about all this? Why did I decide to make this video? 
Well, with the release of Captain Laserhawk, I thought it was a good time to shine a light on this show, as it isn't really talked about all that much. Most of the more popular videos made regarding this series are years old, and the more recent discussions of it haven't been in its favour. And while their opinions are completely valid, there are a lot of flaws here, and someone with a better critical eye than mine would probably say the same. I feel this show has a lot more going for it than it does against it. People may say that it's not true to Rayman, despite creativity and experimentation being the core of the Rayman franchise. Just look at how Rayman's world is depicted through each of his games. Not one of them are completely and utterly the same. And being a circus fugitive, much like facing off against a gang of robo pirates or saving a bunch of fairy women, I feel like I'm gonna explode! falls completely in line with this philosophy. And yes, while the writing may be very inconsistent in its quality, when it's good, it's good, as seen with episode 3. Or at the very least, makes for an interesting watch. The animation is also pretty good for what it's worth. I saw an argument that the show's animation is a lot worse compared to previous Rayman animations that were created before, but those animations were standalone short films, not episodes that were made to be shipped along with 26 others around the same time. And with that in mind, it's not too bad in my opinion, being very expressive and lively at times. But my opinion doesn't really matter here. Yours does. What do you think of the show? Do you think its flaws add up and make it god awful? Or do you think it's an underrated gem? The playlist of all the episodes will be in the description below. I highly recommend you check them out. And hopefully, this way, people will see more in the show than previously thought. Or at the very least just talk about it more. Because I feel it deserves it. Rayman in general deserves it. Hi. <laughs> so that was Rayman the Animated Series, or the original Rayman show before Captain Laserhawk and things like that. This video has been in the works for a good amount of time now. Um, I haven't really mentioned it all that much. I think I might have mentioned it a bit in some community posts as the big video, but that's about it really. The reason it took so long to come out was because I was working on some other projects and I kind of halfway through making this video took some time to sort of finish those projects off before I diverted my focus back to the video fully. And that's probably the reason why the editing and script writing may be a bit all over the place was because I was just kind of on and off this video because I was quite busy. But um, nonetheless, you know, I'm really proud with uh, what I got done with this video and I had a great time making it. I tried to do as much research as I could into this topic but I realised that I may not have been too accurate with some of the things I said or that I may have left some stuff out so uh, feel free to correct me in the comments below. I deeply appreciate it if you do because it just shows that you know there's still room to improve for me as a content creator and I always want to get better and better so doing stuff like that really helps me so thank you. Special thanks to uh, Berkey, Tempates and Tumbleweed for all starring and acting in the uh, episode 5 Gmod section of the video. That section was a lot of fun to just record and edit and make and although it was kind of hard uh, making some of the scenes in uh, Gmod and stuff like that, I deeply appreciate them like being by my side, kind of helping me with everything and just generally wanting to be part of the, of, of the, of the video making process. It was just, you know, can't thank them enough. They're honestly like great people. I'll leave their channels in the description. An even specialer thanks to uh, Berkey who also, as well as acting and starring in the G World section also made the thumbnail for this video. Berkey's a great guy, he's made a couple of thumbnails for me in the past and he himself just also makes really funny videos and I've I've starred in some of the videos he's made so you know be sure to check his channel out. Left, 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 I, left, I left. managed to like what? No! <laughs> no! No! What? 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 I also just wanted to say that I have a Twitter now. I don't use it an awful much. I don't really know what you do on Twitter but like I have it, so uh, I guess go follow me there. And yeah, you know, and also uh, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel. This type of content is what I really mainly want to focus on going into the future. And I have a lot more topics planned. Be sure to subscribe and stay with me. <laughs> but anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you for watching. <laughs>